The Rumble is done, WrestleMania beckons, and when we get to that show, <laughs> here's what I reckon. Because that's right, given that we are only a few weeks away from the granddaddy of them all, and we know what WWE did back at the Rumble Premium Live event, is 10 matches that you're probably going to see. Number 10, Dominic versus Rey Mysterio. This is gonna rock. Now, even though it sounds like the reason Rey Mysterio wasn't in the Rumble properly is because he got injured during that match with Karrion Cross on SmackDown, the way WWE pivoted here was awesome, because I always expected it was going to be Dominic who threw him out. So instead, when Dommy Boy did walk down the aisle, he had Rey Mysterio's mask, and he's all like, ha ah, ah, I think I just beat him up. And then we kept the story going in whatever way we had to, so when we do get to WrestleMania, we can do Father versus the Son. And given that they now have such established characters, I'm very excited. And it would have been badass anyway for obvious reasons. But now Dominic has become the condom and he's such an absolute dickhead. You want to see Ray kick his own son's ass. But is he going to be able to overcome his sadness? Because don't forget he left Raw to go to SmackDown. Because he was like, oh my boy, he ate me. And I also think that Dom should win this. And Ray's not going to care. I mean, once again, it came out of his loins. Unless, of course, we do something like a mask versus hair match. I don't need to see Rey Mysterio unmasked again. And also, watching Dominic have his head shaved, just going, please don't do it. I think that would be pretty funny. It would also mean that I could like him even more, because look at me. Also, don't forget, if we did do mask versus hair, and Dominic got Rey's mask, it means the two people responsible for exposing Rey's face would be his own son. <laughs> and Kevin Nash. Number nine, Seth Rollins versus Logan Paul. So before the Royal Rumble, I wouldn't have predicted this. I was all like, oh, maybe Logan Paul is going to face Austin Theory, or maybe Logan Paul is going to face John Cena, or maybe Logan Paul is going to face Ricochet. And then he grabbed Seth, and he threw him over the top rope. And I was like, well, we've got to pull the trigger. When Seth was asked about this on the subsequent Raw 2, he sold it like somebody had slapped his mother. And you don't do that for fun. And we already know that Seth Rollins is going to be in the Elimination Chamber at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. So we're going to have to do it at WrestleMania. As soon as it did click in my brain, I was like, oh my gosh, it's so obvious. Because Logan is some kind of wrestling savant, and do you know who never has a bad match? It's Seth Rollins. So even though that Saudi Arabia show with Roman Reigns was pretty damn good, I actually think this will top it. I mean, it's basically going to be that, but more flippy floppy. And if we don't do it now, something has gone awry. We shall keep you informed at What Culture Wrestling, because we love a good story. Number eight, Gunther versus Drew McIntyre. And maybe you throw Sheamus in there for good measure too. I mean, it kind of been a mistake that these three kept going at it during the Rumble, and it was just big men slapping man meat. And also, when Drew and Sheamus were eliminated, it was basically Gunther doing the hurling. Also, Gunther is big, Drew is big, the Intercontinental Championship, thankfully, is big once again. So why the hell wouldn't you do this at Mania? ticking all the boxes. Both guys also enjoy smacking their opponents in the face, much as Gunther and Sheamus did back at Clash of the Castle, which is why I can kind of see the Irishman being inserted into here too. Although saying that, if you do want to do a big IC program, this should probably be mano a mano. Also, imagine if Drew McIntyre wins this. He hasn't gone after that belt since 2010. That would be wild. And after the fact, it could spark a feud between Drew and Sheamus. And Sheamus is all like, well, I've never won that thing. And I'd absolutely like to. I don't like you anymore. I also feel like for ages, WrestleMania has been lacking when it comes to classic intercontinental title matches. I'm talking about the likes of Bret Hart and Roddy Piper. And while McIntyre and Gunther would be very different, I truly believe they could hit a similar level. Number seven, Becky Lynch versus Bailey. I mean, surely, right? Otherwise, what are we doing? It has been an odd program in many ways because it does feel a bit elongated. But the other answer is that we finish it at the Elimination Chamber. Once again, look at my face. I ain't buying it. Because, of course, you can still get damage control involved in this to build to an even bigger stipulation match at Mania. And also, do not forget, Becky Lynch's and Bailey's story has essentially been going on since NXT, as they keep telling us. So if you want to get full circle, you finish it early April in LA. We also don't 100% sure know what Bianca Belair's situation is going to be post-mania. So either Bailey or Becky Lynch could win this and then go on to take her on. Number six, Bianca Belair versus Oscar. And speaking of Bianca Belair's Raw Women's title, let's get it going. Because ever since Oscar did return to our televisions as her Kana character, she has just been kicking everybody's ass. So let's just take this, look at my hand go, to its natural conclusion and put it in a WrestleMania title match against Banks. 
That was my nickname for Bianca Belair. We gotta kill this. We also know she's already in the Elimination Chamber and the winner of that does become the number one contender. So you don't even have to put straws here. It's right in front of you. And really when we break it down too, the other options just aren't as fun. Like Liv Morgan is good and Nikki Cross is good and Raquel Rodriguez is good and Mia Yim is good and so on and so forth. But they ain't gonna bring it like Oscar can bring it. And given that we do have two nights of WrestleMania, absolutely want to book some bangers. And I know this doesn't really tie into anything that happened at the Rumble, but I would like us to do a Batista here. Just give me what I want. Number five, Edge versus Finn Balor. But otherwise, Edge has been wasting his time. See, he can't even hear the words Judgment Day without going absolutely crazy. And this is a match the fans have wanted for ages. Let's go Nike and just do it. I think we'll probably also get Edge and Beth Phoenix taking on Finn Balor and Rhea Ripley at the Elimination Chamber so we can build it here too. And the long rumour has always been, when we do get down to it, they will be in the Hell in a Cell. And given that we have deleted the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view from the calendar, let's do one on WrestleMania. Given how much the rated R superstar hates the group too, I suppose you could do a stipulation here as well, whereas if he wins, the Judgment Day has to disband. That absolutely means Bala has to be victorious. Don't take them away from me. It would also serve as a bow out to a rival that has been going on for ages, because of course Edge used to head up Judgment Day before he's like, ha, I'm gonna cut my hair and stop doing this because it's not really working out. And it would also sit perfectly on either day one or day two. So just go have some fun with it. And before Bray Wyatt versus Uncle Howdy. Maybe, I don't know, because the last time I saw Bray Wyatt and Uncle Howdy together, Howdy was dropping an elbow drop onto LA Knight. Bray seemed quite happy about it. We are trying to form some sort of group here though. You want to establish it at WrestleMania, which also kinds of acts as the season finale. And look, we may as well have a bit of spooky wookiness on there. Sports entertainment. The real question is, is whether Wyatt actually is Uncle Howdy, or if he's not, or whether the uncle is actually Bo Dallas. And if that is the case, does he reveal himself as Bo Dallas, or does he remain as Uncle Howdy? Don't forgive me, I just fell over for no reason but you probably could pit these two against each other and also do something with Alexa Bliss. Whether any of that was based off the Royal Rumble or not though, I don't know. Number three, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus The Usos. Because surely you have Jay vanish from TV after everything that happened at the Royal Rumble. He returns at the Elimination Chamber and he screws over Sami Zayn, who has taken on Roman Reigns for the WWE Universal Unified title. He rejoins the bloodline we will have water coming out of our eyes. It also means all the heat that was on Roman Reigns has indeed switched to Jey Uso, which builds WrestleMania, where you do Owens and Zayn winning the tag team titles from Jimmy and Jay, and then we all do the dance of joy. But it still counts as a huge moment because the Usos have just been champions for ages, and it unites Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens again. And don't pretend that doesn't make you feel all warm and fuzzy in your tum-tum. It does. And you could still do some other stuff at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view too, because number two, Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns. And I don't think this is gonna happen. I think WWE are dead set on Cody Rhodes and I've got no problem with that. But given what did happen at the Rumble, you just never know. I mean, you could even go absolutely crazy and have Sami Zayn work both nights. And on day one, he wins the tag team titles. And on day two, he wins the world title. Now you're screaming at your television. Ha ha, you can't do that, Simon. And I ask you this, my friend, why not? Let's build some stars. And if we are basing mania of how people have performed over the last 12 months, then Sammy deserves that, and he deserves it with ice cream on. Don't forget that he is now a ratings draw too. The evidence is out there. When he is on television, all the numbers go up. So don't come into my house and tell me he can't be the face of the company. Yeah, my ass he can't. But once again, I wouldn't bet the bank on this, but let's also dare to dream. Number one, Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes. And we did just mention it, and don't forget it is looking at us right in the face. Night two of WrestleMania, here's your main event. Cody has won the Royal Rumble after all, so we can't lay it on any thicker than that. And obviously it ties into the story that we have now been telling accidentally since 2016. Rhodes left the company, and now he's back to win the big one. There is a different debate behind all of this though, because do not forget, WWE was dead set on having The Rock versus Roman Reigns for this show, and there ain't no way The Great One was going to win that, because he would ride back off to Hollywood. So do we get to the point where someone goes, all right, we'll do Cody versus Roman, but this wasn't the time for Reigns to lose the championship. <laughs> so if you can believe it, the American nightmare is defeated. Once again, though, you can counter that by saying, yeah, but surely if The Rock had competed, we would have got to SummerSlam, and then we would have done Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes, and Cody would have been victorious, so we can just speed things up. 
hey, your brain can think a whole barrel of things, just don't know shrug emoji. I do like that there is a seed of doubt though because it makes things so much better. Just to be completely calorific here, as it makes sense, just for some clarity, I think Cody Rhodes should win on April the 3rd or April the 4th, whatever that Sunday is. Because if we don't do it, what the hell will we be thinking? Now, please do leave a comment below and let me know two things. One, do you agree with these WrestleMania predictions? And two, what WrestleMania predictions do you have of your own? Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Click the video on the screen right now, wherever it will be, to watch more What Culture content. Follow us on social media. And if you like to read things, whatculture.com. My name is Simon from What Culture. Thank you very much for joining me as always. I'll see you soon.